Hi, I'm Chris from SQL for Automation. In this short tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can download and install SQL for Automation on a Linux system. To download the installation files, we can go to our website, sqlforautomation.com, and click on Download. And then in here, we select Linux as our operating system, fill out this short form, and then accept the terms, and click on this button here. And this will send a download link to our email. So from there, we can just copy the link, paste it into our browser, Click OK, and we should have our files. So now let's install it. To do that, I'm going to open the terminal and first check where I am right now. And then I'm going to create a new directory called SQL for Automation. Go to my Downloads folder and look for my file. And here it is. So now I'm going to move that file from here to my new directory. So it shouldn't be in here anymore. And then I'm gonna go back and into my new folder. And there's the file. So now we can unzip this, which will get us a few files. And we are only interested in the setup file, so let's unzip that as well. And we should get this tar file here. Now this tar format is kind of like the zip format of Linux. It can also store multiple other files, and when it has the gset ending, it's compressed. But these two formats have one important difference though, and it has to do with the file attributes. Now the tar format can store Unix file attributes like user ID, group ID, whereas the zip format can store MS-DOS file attributes. And for some of the installation files, we need these attributes. So if you are extracting this download in Windows, make sure to not extract this tar file because you can do that using WinRAR or something like that, but you will lose the attributes. All right, so to unpack it, I'm gonna use the tar command with the flags x for extract, v for verbose, so it tells us what it's doing, and f for file to assign the file I want to unpack. Okay, so now we should have a folder with our installation files. So let's go there. First, we have to select our architecture. And if you don't know which one you're using, you can use this command. So in my case, it's this one. Next, we'll have to decide which Qt version we want to use. Now, Qt is the framework on which the S4A connector is built on, and in pretty much all the cases, you should use the new version. So let's go there, and we should find our installation files. Now, I recommend you do the complete installation using the S4A complete inst file. But you could also just install the connector, or just the tools. And then finally, if for some reason you need to uninstall the Sentinel driver, which is being used by our license dongle, you can do that using the Sentinel uninst file. Just make sure that the driver isn't being used by something else on your system. Okay, before we install it, let's just check our internet connection real quick, which seems to be fine. So now to install it, I'm gonna use administrator rights and the command sh to execute all the commands in the installation file. Then I type in my password and let it install. Now, depending on the system, it might need to install some dependencies as well, which you'll have to allow each time by typing Y. So after it's finished, we can check if the service is running by using the command service as for a connector status. And we can tell by this white LED here and the text that it's not. Now, another way to check the status is by typing in service status all, which will list all the services and mark the running services with a plus sign. So again, in my case, the service isn't running. And that's because for some of the dependencies, I have to reboot my system first. So let me just do that. And after rebooting, we can check the status again, and it should be running. All right. Now to stop the service, we can use the command sudo service as for a connector stop, which might take a while, so just wait. And then we can check the status again and see that it worked. Then now to start the connector again, we can use the same command, but with start instead of stop. And if we just want to restart the running service, we can use restart instead. All right, so let's start our config tool real quick. Connect it to the connector. Activate a test license. And as you can see, we have a connection. Now, if you are using a system without a display, you can also test this connection from a different device. 
just open the config tool there. Enter the IP address of the device where the connector is running, which I already have, and then connect it to the connector. Okay, so that's how you install SQL for automation on a Linux system. I hope this video was helpful, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below or check out our other videos for more information. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.